The Rice to Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook using the promo code RTRS. Download that app. And brought to you by Adam Kasabi, the official realtor of the process. Big news from Kasabi. Listen for the ad during the pod. Uh, ProcessRealtor.com. And finally, brought to you by Stateside Urban Craft Vodka, the official sponsor of the Corner 3 newsletter. Available to order Stateside Vodka from 44 different states at StatesideVodka.com. On the show today, Sixers end their three-game losing streak in just the fucking most painful way possible, as only they can do. Uh, Ben Simmons had probably the best offensive game of his entire career. We'll talk about that as well. Had some first-quarter Isaiah Joe minutes, fourth-quarter Isaiah Joe minutes, the return of Tyrese Maxey. Sixers rumored to be interested in two guards. Um, And in the mailbag, what each Sixer should be fined for, who will be the next snake guy, and some of the weirdest questions ever to hit the mailbag. Um, Plug one, two plugs. One, subscribe to YouTube right now. Subscribe. If you're watching, subscribe. Half of you that watch don't even subscribe. Subscribe. Plug number two, stateside vodka. Distilled seven times. Gluten-free. Kosher. Carb-free. Amazing, delicious, made right here in Philadelphia and sponsor the Corner 3 newsletter. Um, And you can order in 44 different states. That didn't used to be the case. So across the country, you can order Stateside Vodka. You don't have to be right here. Um, StatesideVodka.com, StatesideVodka.com. If you're in the area, PA Wine and Spirits or your regular liquor stores in Delaware and New Jersey, StatesideVodka.com. Must be 21 to drink. Without any further ado, Amos and the Chef. Welcome to the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Spike Eskin, along with a guy who must have seen MC W dunk on Nerlens tonight. That oh, is Mike Levin. You did I didn't? It? No. Oh, can it. you can you search it on your phone? I'll, search, I'll search it during the podcast. We'll, we'll, okay. We'll all right. All right. Sure. Boy, it's a moment. It's it's oh, definitely wow. a moment. Well, there was a there was a um, Dario and Luau situation in last night's game. I think. Oh, I didn't see uh, when they were sort of going back and forth on each other, like. Uh, covering each other, and it was just like there. Everybody's out there. Rashawn's out there. Jeremy, Christian yep. Wood. Everybody's doing it. It's yep. it is nice. It is nice when our guys succeed. We got to get we got to get Tony Roten at least like winning the tournament. Like he has to. Oh, it would be great. Like that would be a nice thing. Like give me something. But uh, be- a lot of a lot of good guys. Let's get Hollis a contract. It's just it's been a long time now since those process years. Yeah, twenty twenty one. That was twenty thirteen to twenty fifteen sixteen. Like that is. A long time ago. It's been quite some time, and these guys still kicking around. Good for them. Actually, speaking of which, the uh, the Apple Podcast Review, uh, we're at uh, 2,851 five-star ratings, closing in on 3,000. But it's about another one of those guys that we I, I don't think we've talked about in years. So this comes from Tom, who always tweets at us about this. Subject line is justice for KJ. He says, way too much time talking about Furkan winning a foreign dunk contest. Not enough time talking about KJ McDaniels hypothetically winning the NBA dunk contest. I just um, saw it. Oh, the MCW oh, wow. New Orleans run? Yeah. It's ugly. Yeah. MCW's turned himself into a fine little player. Yeah. And so is New Orleans. MCW feels like a, a rocket always to me. He's the kind of guy that ends up on the Rockets. I me. wonder if there's still bad blood between those two guys. That So, okay. So when I saw the dunk, I'm like, he's dunking on him for the Ish Smith comment <laughs> six years ago. <laughs> that can't be it. We can't. We the Sixers are too good for us to still be talking about these guys. I, I mean, God bless them. I love them, but uh, but yeah. Right. Well, and by the way, than... would take a bunch of them back. A bunch yep. of them would love to have yep. a number of those guys on our bench right now. Mm-hmm. 
I would take Roten. I would take Nerlens. I would take Hollis. Starting, starting with Roten is tough. Well, come on. It's He's really the guy. Tough. He's the guy. All right. So this game tonight, boy, I don't even know what to say. It was nice to see Tyrese. Good things. Nice to see Tyrese Maxey get a little mojo back. Nice to see Isaiah Joe get a little bit of run. And I would say, to my eyes, it was the best thing game to my eyes of the um of the season in that his you know he got extended run and he started and it seemed like his impact lasted longer than it normally did it seemed like whoever he was guarding on the rockets whether it was wall or whoever just wanted no parts of handling the ball while he was there so those and of course the you know and beat has his worst game of the year he was like 30 and 10 or whatever the and nine assists or whatever the hell he yeah. had so um, those are the good yeah. things. Did, yeah, did. I mean, nice to get a win after a, a frustrating three-game losing streak. Um, obviously, you know, after the Rockets, after the Jazz game, Ben played so well. It was so exciting to see. It's a bummer to have him miss this game and then Embiid to be injured and Shake to still be out. Like it was, the Rockets are obviously down guys, but this was. Uh, is there? I mean, they're struggling, and they had a long road trip that they just got back from like just over a day ago like it was it was a you could tell that they ran out of juice Mm -hmm. pretty quickly plus Embiid like really having a what seems to be a very painful back injury that he's just not quite recovering from and that's that's scaring me plus he played 37 minutes you really wish like Dwight should have to come out and apologize like he should have to apologize that and Dwight played a, a pretty nice game against against the Jazz but I mean, this, there's no excuse to be up 28 and for Embiid to come out and then to be like, okay, we're, the wheels are coming off. It sucks. It's, it sucks that he had to come back out. I wish it would have been nice to have a, a backup five at this point that could, that could just hold down the fort a little bit. But Dwight is just, he's been mostly really bad the past little bit. But Joel, even, even his injuries as, even as injured as he is, just 31, 11, and 9 on 10 of 21. Active on the defensive end, ten and twelve from the line. He like Joel doesn't get enough foul calls. Like he he gets fouled significantly more than he gets. Some of the rip throughs are you know are the that's gaming the system. But because he's not a guard, there are times when like he gets guys to bite, and then he'll be like, okay, I got him. That's a foul. But because he's so big, the refs are like, ah, eh, whatever. Whereas if like Trey Young or Dame or Kyrie or Harden or whatever, like, they're going flying, and so they're making that call. And so MB doesn't get the benefit of those calls a lot, and I think he gets frustrated, and sometimes it makes it look like he's forcing it or playing sloppy or whatever. Um, but for MB to, you know, the game the game got way closer than it was, and then he just sort of took over at the end of the game and made sure, like, we're not losing this goddamn game. Huge spin, spin move into a hook late over Cousins when the league got cut to six, and then he had the contested step back, very Dirk-like, uh, on the baseline when the lead got cut down to four and uh, they won because of him for the, you know, millionth time. It's uh and that, I mean, ridiculous block on Nwaba that they challenged and finally were successful at. It was an incredible play. Just like, you know, he's, he's great. He's really great. Some slappy passes. He's always going to have those, but uh, nine assists, tr- trusting the shooters, moving the ball. Well, MVP. Uh, uh, Zach Lowe had uh, Hollinger. Hollinger on, and they were talking about the MVP race so far. And Zach said he would vote for Embiid if the vote was right now, which I thought was stunning, actually. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I mean, I think it's right. I well, think no, it's, I think it's I definitely. Think the, right. I think the um, the the Nuggets lost to the Wizards tonight. I think like they're just. Jokic is incredible. He's an incredible player, but they're not good enough that you can give him the MVP when there are other this many other good candidates. And I, I don't think you can give it to him. And then be it, you know, if LeBron keeps this up with AD out for the next month, month and a half, whatever it is, then I then I could be convinced. Sentimental vote. Plus he's playing a ton of minutes at his age. All that stuff. Get him the fifth. Like I get it. I get that stuff. And and the Lakers obviously won the championship last year and figured to be the the favorite this year as well. But when you have a teammate like Anthony Davis, who's also an MVP contender in his own right, I don't think that you can be the MVP. Like, I, I just don't. Like, I, I wow. think that's, I think that you, 
if you if you go to a super team where whatever where you have like you know KD and Harden and Kyrie and stuff like if you're if you're if there are two top ten MVP finishers on one team then neither of them can get it because they're clearly not that valuable if they have another guy that can do it the Sixers without Embiid maybe wouldn't make the playoffs. Legitimate. If, if he was out for no, the year, I, they wouldn't make the play. Or, or they in might the make East, the play game over yeah. the course. Yeah, over the course yeah. of a full season, uh, getting used to it, playing with it, probably getting a stretch five, and figuring it out. I could see them having enough talent to to at least get into the play in situation. But they're the best team in the league with Embiid, and and that's or in the East with with Embiid, and that's that's huge. That that's the difference. He plays both ends. He's a top. Five to ten player at this in this this season, he's a top five or ten player on both ends at this point, right. and his team is the best in his conference. Uh, and without him, they're trash. So, MVP. Yeah, well, I mean, neither other guy is a top five or ten player on both ends. To your your point, and LeBron, I, I could I, give you in like in like any given play, he could be that, but he he's, he's not as counted on to carry the defense as much as Embiid is. And and look, man, this is uh, fuck LeBron at this point. I mean, <laughs> look, it's it's his he yes, it is amazing that he's doing it at thirty six. Yes, but like I know we we will sometimes debate what the MVP is, but it's not be really good when you're old. Like that that's not in the fucking description. I can't imagine anywhere. And on top of that, it's not even it's not even a really good LeBron year. It's just a, a year. And I, I, look, man, he cares too much about it. He pushed Embiid while he was done, while he was jumping to hurt him, and he's fucking getting all of his loser writer friends to who's the what's her fuck that said uh, that said he's unquestionably the MVP so far this year. A lot of people are saying that. Ruben nah, Jovovich out here saying that. ESPN writer, um, not Jackie McMullen, Ramona. Yes, Ramona Shelburne. I'm just like, enough, enough, enough. And who knows with Joel's like trajectory and his body and all that, when he might have this shot again, that it's a better story. It's a kid started playing basketball when he was 16, came <laughs> Wait, from fucking Africa. You can't do the like, you're good when you're old is not, doesn't count, but also the like, kid starting late. It's just story that it's just count. not a good story. The LeBron story. It's just it's sure. Corny. I mean, he's incredible. He's thirty thousand years old and he's still doing this. He's incredible. It's unbelievable. If Embiid was I, having a worse season, I'd be like, awesome, give it to he's him. He's not that's, even as old rules. as me. LeBron. But yeah, and you and you're not playing like that's <laughs> that's that's. that's the um, uh, one, one thing I, I mean, want to Embiid, say. Embiid deserves it for for all the reasons I laid out. Yeah. I think I, I think people will be like, well, should, they have to be penalized for having good teammates, and it's like, yeah. In the MVP race, yeah, I, I think it is. Well, and I think what I would say is, in that case, you have to be above and beyond if you're in that situation. Sure. Like, it has to be an outlier one of your seasons. Or, sure, and there's no one else there. Like, I, I, I don't yeah. think, like, how good Paul George is this year, I don't think you can give it to Kawhi. Like, you could give it to Steph or Jokic if their teams were better, but when they're hovering around 500, it's just not, it doesn't, doesn't do it for me. And or or if if honestly if the Lakers were uh, twenty eight and two, but they're not, you know, like like they're they're not they're not having some they're good obviously, but they're not having some like wild above sea. Anyway, the only other thing I want to say about Joel is, and you mentioned it, as as somebody who has walked around when their back is hurt before, like that dude is walking around like his back hurts, and. The reason it's not getting better is because you can't get better jumping up and down on a basketball court and bouncing into people that are 250 pounds and bending over for balls and all this. Like, it's not going to get better this year. Uh, you know, I hope it is just something that is that is a pain tolerance thing and he, he's not making it worse or anything like that, but... I don't know, man. Like you can see it when he bends over, and when he, even when he's just standing there waiting to shoot free throws, he just looks like he's in a lot of pain, and it's kind of a, yeah. a bummer to see him like that. So the cool thing is, you know, even with with uh, Dwight playing poorly, is that they just had their most successful Ben at the five stretch ever, um, and in that 
Utah game, he basically ran, played Rudy Gobert off the floor for a little bit, which is cool to see. Um, and he's screening and rolling and playing downhill and finishing through contact and getting to the line and hitting his foul shots. That's all awesome. And so if they do end up, if they can improve that, you know, you have Tobias out there with Ben in the, in the small ball. I would love, I would love another guy that, that could like bang a little bit inside, but not be as, as limited as Mike Scott is. Like I, I love Mike Scott. I think Mike Scott rules. I would love to not trade him just so he can be around the team. Cause I think he's just a well-liked guy. He shouldn't be playing on this team. He's not good enough. He's not doing any. He's not doing anything of positive value right now. Nothing. He's not shooting. He's not shooting. He's not even looking to shoot. He's not playing defense. He's not a good I passer. Wonder if, he's not a good dribbler. He's not I doing if his, anything. His, I wonder if his body is shot. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. absolutely. But like they, even when, yeah, even when he's playing well, he's not like he's not a gifted passer or a gifted defensive player. He's just a he's just a catch and shoot, stand still, mm-hmm. stretch four. And I would I would love it is time to. To improve that stuff. But they got the win. I think just to be excited about this game, you, you mentioned Matisse. There was a stretch in the first quarter. Oh, man. Stretch in the first quarter. Three three plays in a row. Mm-hmm. Swing to him in the corner. Drives past. I think it was Jay Sean Tate. Uh, drew a second defender, which you don't see much for Matisse off the dribble. And then sort of kicks it behind his back to Danny for a three. Next play gets a steal on ball. And then a hits a transition three on that same play. And it's just like, man, that's nice. Like that is, there's just not that many guys that can play at that level. And that's the, that's the tantalizing upside. And then on the other side, Hill, Doc yells at him for being in the wrong place on offense at the, at the, on a side out of bounds set play. And it's like, ah, fuck. But he's, you know, he's, when they, when they run two, three zone, which is a weapon and they should keep bringing it out in basically every game, I think. Um, and and just like junk it up a little. He's excellent. He had four steals tonight in a block. Affected a ton of shots. He stayed with Wall. Uh, late at the game when when Houston was making their push, and he he forced a tough shot at the rim. Even when he doesn't get blocks or steals, he's still like contesting. They called him for a couple foul. Uh, he had five fouls, which I think some of them were were a little cheap. But uh, he had a nice finish in transition off an Isaiah Joe pass. We'll talk about Isaiah Joe. But I I thought it was a nice Matisse game useful especially when him and ben are out there it's it's both very fun on defense and very dangerous on offense and so the fact that he got to play you know 31 minutes without ben where there were other shooters around him and uh he could not be depended on to like stand wide open and if you hit this shot then the whole offense falls apart uh i thought it was it was just a nice a nice matisse game but certainly not without his frustrations yeah, and then the the other two guys I thought are worth mentioning, as you mentioned there, Isaiah Joe had a, a nice little run in the first quarter, and I thought it was nice to see Maxi like get a little burn and also hit some shots that he was hitting earlier in the season and yeah. feel like he was effective. You it's know? tough. They, Doc just doesn't trust him to run the offense, and it seems like you know he played mostly combo guard at Kentucky, kind of behind a couple other guys that would handle the ball more in, in quickly in Haggins. And it was a little similar to, to Drew's situation in college when he was playing the two guard with Darren Collison. And it was just like, maybe there's something there. Like he could be a point guard. And I saw like good passing instincts at the beginning of this year with the Sixers, but like he just hasn't, he hasn't had enough reps at like running real offense. And so often when he's out there, he's either, you're the only guy, this is Maxi, you're the only guy with like a bunch of guys that can't really do much else or you're on with like all the starters and you're kind of just standing still and need to be a floor floor spacer. And he's not that like, that's the, that's the tough. It's like, okay, doc's like, all right, let's simplify the game. You're just a scorer. So let's like have somebody else run the offense and you can just like, when the ball comes in your hands, you're just thinking about scoring, but that means he's spacing the floor and he didn't get, get any threes up tonight. And it's just like, right. it's, it is, it is complicated there's there's a ton of talent there. I think he's really going to be good, but like he has to be more willing to shoot the three or be way more valuable running the offense with the ball in his hands and and creating opportunities for others also. So I I'm like look great to see some shots go in. He gets fouled so much and they don't call it yet. I I, I think he will get those calls and and become a more efficient player. Um and he's driving the hell out of the ball. He's being aggressive. It's fun to see, but like. We, we, we got to get those shots up. This is, an, I mean, how many games in a row? 15, 16 games in a row where they shot far far fewer threes? Maxi's shooting threes. Six, yeah. I mean, they shot, they shot well from three, 12 to 26. That's nice. 
Danny was hot in the first quarter. Seth was hot all game. Um, but they sh- they got Houston shot forty seven, and it's just like that's hard. It's hard to win like that when you're when you come up against like a, a pretty good shooting team that shot their way back into it as you you know you're you're fighting for tough tough shots every step of the way. Now they got to the line. They get to the line. That's that's their advantage. But it's still like. That that deficit has to be, you know, narrow. Mike, you know how we were talking once about betting on the Sixers, and you mentioned that for us, it's sort of like insider trading. Yes, if it, I th- I'd say we're a little bit dumber than insider traders, in that we're not right always, but I it does still feel a little unfair. Yeah. So on DraftKings tonight, so Sixers, I think w- when the game tipped off, were ten and a half point favorites and then at halftime they were 24 and a half point favorites you could bet the rockets plus 24 and a half on DraftKings, and it just seemed like like the easiest bet of all time <laughs> yeah. like if you've been here the whole time you knew rockets plus 24 and a half was the play forever like the easiest play of all time yeah. um the tournament it's not quite time for the tournament but that doesn't mean it's not time for DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. All new players get the chance to cash $100. New customers bet $1 on any team to hit a three-pointer in any basketball game this week. Wouldn't bet on our, t- our team to do that, but any other team uh, to, to hit one three-pointer, and you make $100. So it's 101 odds for the team you bet on to hit one three-pointer won't last forever go to the app store now download the DraftKings sportsbook app it's the most fun easiest to use sportsbook app there is there are special promotions every day special odds boosts every day you bet on sports you didn't even know existed plus the ones that you didn't know did know exist if you don't want to bet on basketball because you have enough skin in the game already hockey soccer baseball's coming up They've paid out over $7 billion to their customers since 2012. $7 billion. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code RTRS to get your shot to turn $1 into $100. When you bet on any team to hit a three-pointer in any basketball game this week, that's promo code RTRS for new customers to get a shot at 100-to-1 odds on any basketball team to hit a three-point shot. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. Winnings paid out in four $25 free bets in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, look, they're, I think you mentioned on the last pod that they're always going to be at a at sort of a disadvantage with three-point shot attempts. And I mentioned yesterday, you know, their three top players in terms of salary are Tobias, Ben, and Joel. And in that $100 million, you basically get three and a half made threes a game, right? So that puts an incredible amount of pressure. And I want that up, by the way. I want, yeah. I want Tobias taking 10 threes a game, and I want Joel taking like six. Right. Now, the, I don't think the Tobias thing's ever going to happen, right? I, I, we could want it, but even when it feels different, you still look at his averages, and it's like, oh, 5.2. Yeah. You know, like, he took, he took a 28-footer in half court. That's the, that's the one make he had tonight so was the 28-footer, like Covington-esque. Where yeah. he like st- stretched out, and he's like, "I have space. I'm going to take it and win." And it was nice to see. Yeah, he's obviously so comfortable inside the line, but you just want you want him to be able to hoist those. And for for weeks at a time, sometimes he just he played great. He had a great game: 24, 15, and five on good efficiency. Got to the line, played well, used his hands well on defense. But just like I need, I need more threes. I, I really, I really need them. Yeah, well, I I think that is a you know, with uh, nobody wants to hear it at this point, but when you give Maury another off season and a real off season to maneuver, and then whatever happens this year, I think next year you probably end up with more than one three point specialist on the team. Like, you know, Danny Green's a good three point shooter, but the only three point specialist guy is um, is uh, Curry. And and you're right on Maxi is the, the problem is he's not particularly good at any of those roles yet enough. Yeah. So they so he's just really just kind of filling guard time at mm-hmm. this point. He's not a point guard and he's not a microwave scorer shooter guy. So yeah. he's just sort of 
eaten minutes, but he, he looked good tonight. No, it was and, nice to see. And and Seth, I thought I, you mentioned Seth. I think he played really well. Mm-hmm. Um, he he's shooting confidently. Him and Joel, for whatever reason, still have not quite gotten the JJ Redick dance down yet. Joel seems to miss him by like eight feet with a pass once a game. Yeah. Um, I really don't understand it. Uh, I think it's just kind of sloppiness, laziness. The whole team turned the ball over too many times. Um, they didn't have many in the fourth quarter, but I think through three, I thought they had 18 or something. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, I love watching Seth play. I think especially when the shot's going in and they run him through some pick and rolls, he gets the ball in his hands, he's got a defender on his hip, and he really like comfortably – Gets to his spots. He's obviously not finishing at the rim above the rim, but like he uses the glass well. He's got really nice touch. If if there's a big rolling, like there there's like the the defending big is having to make some decisions, and and he always gets that shot up, and it's it's just nice to see. It was it was a really you know he's not a point guard. He played point guard tonight because the Sixers were down Simmons and Shake, but I thought I thought he played really nicely. I, I was I was happy to watch him play this well. Mm-hmm. And I, you always mention they should play Isaiah Joe, but like. You know, his his limited run tonight makes me want them to play Isaiah Joe more. Yeah. You know? And he missed a bunch yeah. of shots that he would I think normally make. He's a he's a good he's a really good shooter. He's a quick shooter. He shoots the ball high. I thought his defense was, was really great actually. Um he's still really skinny. Of course we're gonna say that every time. It's gonna take him a year a couple years to, to get NBA body, mm-hmm. but he's playing active defense. I thought smart defense. He drew a couple offensive fouls, a couple steals. And he like he has some ball skills, um, and so I, I I think there is a good amount of Isaiah Joe potential, and I would love to watch Isaiah Joe and Tyrese Maxey like just continue to improve and, until they like whether it's next year or the year after like really demand a a bigger role on this team because they've just improved so much and just you know I, I, people talked about it on six on, on Twitter because the the bench has been an issue for quite a while this i mean there's just been too many like they've for a team that is drafted as well as the sixers have late like and they have like there's been a bunch of good finds at different points and we talked about all the sixers that are still succeeding in the league elsewhere like in the that that were found in the 20s and in the second round they they still have had they've had a bad bench for a really long time and part of that is because like you said like a lot of their money is just tied up in three guys but it'd be really nice to have a couple. That's a nice free agent signing. Like that's a gem right there that you actually have for whatever. I think Seth is going to be that. Like I don't. I don't think next year Seth. Seth probably doesn't start next year. Hopefully we'll see. We'll see what happens. But hopefully he's a guy off the bench that you're like, okay, cool. That's like a, that's that's a different change of pace guy off the bench that who's having a big role here. But there's just too many guys off the bench that for a team that already is. I don't want to say limited because I think they're obviously special, but specific with. Ben and Joel as the kind of players they are and the kind of offense they run. There, there's too many limited guys off the bench on this team, and there there needs to be more, just like adults in the room. And we talked. You're gonna we're gonna talk about some, couple guys that are, rumored whether it's uh, Delon Wright or George Hill, which would be like both totally fine. But it'd just be nice to have guys that can just sort of do everything. And you're like, that's fine. This guy knows what they're doing. If yeah. it seems like everybody else has more bench players that are just right doing the stuff like you got it okay no nothing nothing too fancy nothing too crazy but just like there's a there's a grown person there rather than like well this person can't dribble and if they go to, if they look to their left they actually can't breathe so that's actually <laughs> pretty hard to deal with but we can work around it we can work around it and it's just there's too many of those kinds of kinds of guys and i, I, I love i love the young guys i, I think they're going to be good but they're the best team in the east and they need to have a better bench the uh, before we get to those guys, the Delon Wright and uh, and George Hill, I want to talk about the Jazz game. Look, here's what I took from that and the the Simmons at the at the five bit is that it is going to be tough defensively. It just sure. is, yeah. you know. It and like and that caught up with them. It, it's not a full game scenario. It just it just isn't totally. Uh, but but to that point. Dwight defensively is also catching up with them every possession. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I'm, 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 they don't have a good option at this yeah. point. You know, right. like so. So m- when I'm watching it, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, and 
the moments where it's working and like you know there were times like once once Utah started hitting shots it just it did not seem like we were going to be able to keep up and we couldn't yeah. and they just but hitting everything Jordan what Clarkson, you Jesus Christ what's that as Jordan Clarkson Jesus Christ oh yeah everything it's just yeah intensely I mean frustrating watching other teams hit threes confidently and regularly and in volume is is really triggering for me like it, it upsets me I'm start, I'm getting I'm getting close to foam roller uh, at this point, based on how many shots other teams are making that we're not even taking or willing to. Well, they have uh, Bogdanovich and Mitchell and Clarkson and who's the other white guy? Um, Ingles. Ingles. And it's like, whoa, what is this? What are all they can all do it? Yeah. Um, how do you even guard that? So, so, but, but here's like the goal is that if for eight minutes you can make them pay as much as they make you pay, right? Yeah. Like if if Ben can say, oh, well, they have a center on me. You know, I there's this has got to be a mismatch. Even if we're giving up buckets on the other side, if, if we can get through six minutes in a game or five minutes or, you know, just in a game to get us through and maybe even get him rolling a little bit, that was what I took out of that game. Is that because obviously it's not going to work with them beating there all that much and – um, because you, you don't have a center on them. Like, it throws everything off. But if, if we can buy those six minutes in a, yeah. in a playoff game or an important game, that's a, a, a good thing. Totally. And I, don't, I really don't think that Dwight is unplayable. I think it's just there are some Dwight Knights and there's some, like, get him the hell off the court Knights. Mm-hmm. And I think that it'd be nice to have those options sort of the rest of the season. Like, if you can, if you can do Embiid – this was too many minutes, especially when he's in pain. It's too many minutes. So, like, chip those down a little bit. And give me, like, give me 10 Dwight minutes and then, like, 8 Ben at, five, ben at the 5 minutes. Or, like, and, or mix it up. Like, just try something. Let's see it. Let's see what you got. Give me 4 in the first half, 4 in the second half. Run him off the floor. The way Ben played against Utah was, was really, like, eye-opening. And it's been the case since he had that. Was it against the Celtics that he had that incredible fourth quarter? Yeah, yeah, it was a Celtics game. Since then, I mean, he's been excellent. Like he's he's shooting a, you know, earlier in the season, I was like, he's shooting sixty two percent from the line, and like I'm I'm holding on to that as like this is improvement, this is a big deal, and it is. And now it's up to sixty six percent of the line. He looks way more comfortable shooting, um, that going from fifty six percent as a rookie to sixty six point seven percent, like straight up two thirds, on a decent amount of volume at this point, is is a big deal, and it's and it portends good things in the future. He looks really confident. He's spinning that hook shot a bunch. He's playing downhill. He's finishing around the rim. He's dunking. He's taking that extra dribble and just like taking it personally. It's all the stuff that we wanted to see is actually we're actually seeing it, and it's just it's it's cool, man. It's it's cool to think about how how much better he can get already um, if he's starting to hit those shots. That's not just you know transition and putbacks, but also you can go to him in the half court and he can have a little back to the basket. He can have a little face up. He's playing downhill off of drives. He's rolling to the rim. Like, all that stuff is really, really cool. Mike, very big news from our sponsor, Adam Kasabi. Enormous, huge news. You ready for this? New state. Yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, but sort of along those lines. So Adam Kasabi is official realtor of the process. If you want to buy a house, you go to Kasabi. Of course, he's been specializing in the Delaware beaches. He's helped people in PA and New Jersey, but he can only he himself can only sell houses in Delaware. But they are expanding their service. So Adam Kasabi, Process Realtor, is now Adam Kasabi team of Process Realtors. Mm. That's right. A full team of Process Realtors. He's the only Kasabi, as far as I know, uh, within the team. So he got two new realtors from northern Delaware. To help you with Newcastle County. So what's Newcastle County? It's Wilmington, right? So what you look like you were giggling. Did you have something there? Northern Delaware is <laughs> feels like a stretch to me. Yeah. It's not big enough to have northern and southern. Yeah. yeah. He said it. He said northern Delaware. And I was like, Newcastle County, what is that? Just Wilmington? So yes. So if you live in Newcastle County and you want to move like six families yeah. are in northern Delaware. <laughs> Well, I was, dude, when, when he told me, when Kasabi told me about the property taxes in Delaware, I'm like, why am I living in Delaware County? I should just live in Delaware and pay a thousand bucks a year and 
fucking property tax instead of what I pay. Anyway, if you live in Newcastle County, which is Wilmington, you want to move down to the Delaware beaches, sell in northern Delaware and buy the Delaware Shore, Adam will pay a thousand bucks toward your moving expenses, which is incredible. And you get the best realtor there is and the best team of realtors there are. So basically anywhere in Delaware, he has the whole state covered from all the way to the northern tip to all the way at the southern tip. As far as you can see, because it's literally as far as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kasabi's got you in Delaware. Uh, Kasabi team based out of Long and Foster in Bethany Beach. Uh, if you need a realtor, he'll help you find the right one. If it's not Delaware, he will. He's done that for a bunch of listeners. And you don't know who to go to, so just go to him. Go to our guy. Has a great loan guy, refinance guy. I went to him myself. Have a great rate on my house now. A, a new refinance my house. If you need anything, he's the guy. 302-864-8643. 302-864-8643. You can call or text or email adam at processrealtor.com. What was the Delaware line as far as the eye can see? Because it's that's as far as that's yeah. all there is. I love it. That actually brings me to my next thing because I wanted to talk about. So there's a rumor that Sixers were interested in, had asked about Delon Wright and George Hill. And Man, wouldn't those Ben at the Five lineups be better with another <laughs> card, you know? Yeah. Like ha- having uh, – of those two, it seems people are split. I'd rather have George Hill just because I, I feel – he feels like more of an adult. I, I don't know. I, I feel more comfortable in George Hill. I, I, and even when he was with Milwaukee, he was the one getting crunch time – sort of minutes and I I guess I just I can imagine George Hill hitting a big shot that said either one of them would improve that sort of scenario we, yeah. we could we need a point guard but um, I would do you have a preference still on right or George Hill mine's George Hill I don't know I, I like both I think it, I think it's it'll depend on who you are who, who else you think you can get right um, I think both guys are super valuable I think I think George Hill is probably the more well-rounded player um, can play more with a starting lineup. Um, probably uh, uh, at this point, I would say probably a little bit worse as a defender than Delon Wright is, and probably a little less dynamic with the ball in his hands um, as a as a passer and creator for himself. But really solid, knows what he's doing, and a, and a, and a legitimately good shooter that you can count on. Um, and that's especially considering what his role will be at the most important time of the season in the playoffs mm-hmm. when he's when he's when either he's stealing minutes in a Embiid list lineup or he's on the court with Embiid you're going to want him to be able to shoot and Delon is another guy that you're like there's a little like Josh Richardson maybe worse as a shooter that you're like ah, I don't think defenders are going to buy that especially in the playoffs I think they're going to be like go for it like this is your shot take I dare Delon right to take six threes of the, a game but I think right. it's also like if you want to get by as a bench lineup, I think there, there's an argument to be made that Delon is the is the better, like he can operate a little bit more. Um, I think either either guy put them next to Shake on the as like the bench guards, and you're in way better shape than we are now. And it's, it's a bummer. I mean, I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a play the rookies guy, but like that's that's coming from a guy who's never uh, rooted for a team who's won a championship, so. I would like some adults now. And I'm, if Maxi has to be upset that he didn't get to play in the playoffs, then I, I'll i be the one to break it to him. Uh, and he can be he can take that as motivation next year. But you know I'm a rookie guy. I love playing the rookies. Play him right away. Let him be Tyler Hero. But I, I haven't seen enough to, to where I'm, I'm willing to be like, let's wait it out. Because this is this is the chance. This is Embiid's, this is Embiid's best year. We don't know how many we're going to have of this. Yep. It's time for the uh, not easy to stomach uh, YouTube comment of the week. Uh, listener Eugene uh, Kim emailed in that said we should call it the gastroenteritis YouTube comment of the week. But I like the way you said it was not easy to stomach. <laughs> this com- <laughs> this that was credit to CJ. This you I feel like you'll like this one. So this comes from. By the way, we'll, we'll take a comment from our YouTube comments uh, every pod. This comes from Rob Smith. Did you guys see the G League Player of the Week? It's our guy, B-Ball Paul, average, and this is not including tonight's game, but uh, 24.7 points, 11 rebounds. I think the Blue Coats are undefeated, I believe, so far. 4-0. How about B-Ball Paul? How about B-Ball Paul? I mean, love him. Come on. 
first of all, the the purest name in sports, B-Ball Paul. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's not doing a, a crazy amount of stuff. It's not like he's out there isoing from thirty and backing down doing any Chris. He's just like he's basically doing Rashawn Holmes meets Thaddeus Young stuff. And if and if he has really really good defensive instincts, his uh, he gets hands in there. He blocks shots. He runs the floor. Like there is just like a if he could grow into a weird backup five that like is not a total zero from three then i think that is a really really nice guy to have on the cheap for a while i would love to get b-ball paul on the shake on the shake four-year special um next year and and give him a chance to be the jonah bolden that we that we should have deserved that was promised Uh, that he's he's great i'm i'm happy he's happy i'm happy he's playing also the other the sixers other two-way guy rajon tucker playing well um I made the prediction, I think, when we got him that he, w- he would play a meaningful minute this season. Um, so I'm excited for that to maybe come true. I actually actually don't know the rules about the G League bubble. Like, how, how can, you, can you pull people out of that to then come up? Like, what is the situation there? Um, but it's nice to see our Bluecoats succeeding, moving the ball. Jared Brownridge, who's been a Bluecoat for a long time, hitting threes. He could get a look at some point from somewhere. I love Jordan Bone. Love Jordan Bone on my Tennessee, Tennessee volunteer team from a couple years ago. Uh, would love to see him make it. It's a it's a fun team. There's a there's a bunch of fun guys on there. I'm I'm and well, B Ball Paul, player of the I week. W- I would like to. So you remember when we did? Okay. So this is my my message to the blue coats. My message to Alex Yo and the blue coats. You remember Mike when we were responsible for the biggest crowd of all time at a blue coats game. Like we we made that happen. Sure. No, no, and then you got screwed. Uh, in that you were supposed to have a three-point shooting contest and end up being a mic and drill contest. Yeah, with, yeah. The wait, it's is it the it's in Wilmington, right? It was in Wilmington. Yes, correct. So it's the Wilmington screw job, I think, is what I've been calling it. Yes, mind. correct. So like two weeks ago, I'm like, I text Alex from the the Blue Coats, and I'm like, hey, can we get Beatball Paul from the bubble on the Ricky? And he's like, well, we better be able to do that. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So then five days later, I text him a picture from work, and I'm like, hey, I'm wearing a B-Ball Paul shirt at work. I bought it from B-Ball Paul's website. Got no response. Wow. Alex. Iced out. He's too good. G League Player of the Week. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Can't, we lost some juice, man. The pandemic drained me of my juice. What the fuck? Um, anyway, uh, we do have a – I'll say this. We got confirmation on a guest – that I mentioned to you, um, <laughs> February twenty eighth. That guest is the one I mentioned to you that you said, "Sure, why the fuck not?" Is a long season. Yeah, it's it's exciting. I know, I know who it is. It's yep. going to be an interesting one. <laughs> it's exciting. It's and exciting. Wondering what questions I'll be asking. We'll find out. Well, the uh, I will say he is from a, a rival city. And so he's a, a fan of a rival team. I don't. I don't want anyone to try to figure it out. There's no way anyone will figure out who it is. <laughs> okay. Um, Lorenzo Brown mailbag is writes Ricky Sanchez at gmail dot com. Send us uh, your mailbag questions. One basketball, one non basketball. This comes from Brian from Queen Village. Basketball question: Are you mentally prepared for Al Horford getting traded back to the Celtics to be their new starting five, then facing the Sixers in a round two playoff matchup? If not, we may. If not, we may all need to start preparing now. What's the opposite of an appreciator? I didn't think about that. Oh yeah, and it fits. It. Yeah, they have a, like a twenty-eight million dollar trade exception. Oh, that sounds like a, a clapping little man I know. Um. Yeah, I would say he's going to shoot a thousand percent from three as he already mm-hmm. is, but I think Joel would. Joel at this level that he's been playing is is better than any Sixers, uh, returning Sixers, you know, Glenn Robinson, Nemanja Bjelica, Mike Muscala, revenge Horford mm-hmm. type of thing that could that could happen. He's too good. Embiid right now is too good. So I'm. I'm well, I think say he would I'm take it personally. I think he'd take it personally against Horford. Like Absolutely. I think he'll try to kill him. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Not not literally. <laughs> kill him. Uh, non basketball question. Boy, this is so. Several of our emails this week 
I, like a goofball, I'm sitting looking at my computer laughing out loud. This one made me um, laugh out loud. Uh, Maybe this isn't quite the babies versus tank or sitting versus standing level, but I think it will spark some surprising debate. In college, I came up with this scenario. One day you wake up (laughs) and you start pooping soft serve ice cream. The ice cream is 100% sanitary to eat. It's as if it came straight from an ice cream machine rather than your butt, but regular pooping still remains in your memory. It's not like you suddenly forget what it was like to poop and can easily move forward. The question is, would you eat the ice cream coming from your asshole? It's, and it's totally clean. Totally clean. But you, like, it's not as if the memory of shitting is gone. The memory sure. of shitting still there. Yeah. If I was some magic man who could poop clean soft serve ice cream you bet your ass and my ass that i would be eating that soft serve ice cream Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> yeah. i'm I think... i'm and i'm joining the circus i'm doing everything i'm gonna be the <laughs> coolest person of all time <laughs> by the way the answer for like 85 percent of your jigsaw answers is that'll be fine i just joined the circus it'll be a party trick <laughs> there is a big need in the in the circus community. I've been told. I, th- I think it's a very successful field. I look forward to succeeding in. Um, this I agree. I, I think anyone who says they wouldn't do it is lying. They don't want to say out loud they would eat the ice cream. Who the fuck would need the ice cream? Of and if course. I got like if there's, and if I got like confirmation that someone else was also pooping soft serve ice cream, someone that I trusted to not be you know, yanking my chain, mm-hmm. I would eat their ice cream. <laughs> if, if I get guaranteed that it's, that it's clean, it's a miracle. So, so John Gonzalez comes over to your house and he's like, yo, yeah. the, the weirdest thing just happened. Yes. I was shitting the other day. It's soft Absolutely. serve ice cream. Do you 100%. want some? <laughs> yeah. I need, if I get confirmation, <laughs> medical scientists, everybody confirming, yeah, I would happily eat Gonz's Soft serve ass ice cream. <laughs> I would. Um, Bring it on. This one comes from. <coughs> excuse me. This one comes from Arsenio. Um, remember when coaches would find centers for shooting threes? Danny Green should be fined for every dribble he takes. Dwight Howard should be fined every time he clearly goaltends and looks confused. And Bede every time he dives in the fourth quarter. Are there any others on the Sixers? I mean, probably. Look, I love Tobias, and he and he looks so comfortable. You could put a pillow under him when he is in the in inside the line mm-hmm. in the half court. He's just like taking his time. I feel like he shoots eighty percent on him, just playing at his own speed inside the arc. But we say we want to let it. We want him to let it fly more. So I could see a finding there. Danny, by the way, oh my god, like. I, I love Dan. Danny is, I have such a, an affection and a, a, just a red hot hate for Danny Green at different times because he mm. is so solid so much of the time. And then sometimes he's good for two of the dumbest plays you've ever <laughs> seen in your life. Just the absolute dumbest plays you've ever seen in your life, whether that's like dribbling I don't know who he thinks he is sometimes, but he, the, Russell Westbrook's brain suddenly just latches on to Danny's face, and he's like, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to do whatever I can do, and, I, and it's remarkable. He, I thought he had great, played great defense on John Wall late at the rim and nice block, but then is inexplicably allowing him to take, like down eight or whatever it was, allowed him to just be like, hey, yeah, walk into a three. Go for it. To, like two straight threes. And then gets called for a really dumb offensive foul that he just totally elbowed somebody in the throat. Like, Danny. I, and, I, and, and was hitting shots, and I like when he's releasing off the catch all the time. Do it. And he's cutting back door. Great. But holy shit, man. He can't be, he can't be allowed to dribble. He can't. He, uh, there's, there's a stunning amount. There's a stunning amount of that. And I think that's what Matisse is learning from. Because Matisse will do the same thing, obviously. There's a lot of, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life on the basketball court. Yeah. Well, yeah. For me, so Ferk stepping out of bounds on the on the, <laughs> sure. the side. I think, look, he can't help it. 
It's a disease. Well, maybe if you start taking a dollar from him every time he does it, maybe. I think I think if you find him enough, he'll, he he might just start trimming his nails a little bit more. Maybe shaving off a foot or two, a toe or two. Oh get those, wow! Get those get those feet down. Just smaller feet would be the answer to that. Um, oh man. Uh, I will find out who this was um, once we're talking about it. I didn't write down the name. Hey, Spike and Mike. Um, ben Simmons has definitely upped his game offensively and defensively, especially since he was allegedly told to pack his bags for Houston during the Harden trade. He's an all-star, but I'm struggling to point to defensive statistics that actually back this up. He's not even in the top 25 of defensive RPM if that is a stat that even matters. Are there any stats that truly show Simmons' defensive improvements and place as arguably the defensive player of the year, or is he just passing the eye test with flying colors? Yeah, it's interesting. It's a really, it's a really weird thing. I'm not, I, I'm not going to pretend well, to understand like a ton of you know, defensive stats, um, but they've kind of constantly been just lukewarm on him. Um, but the eye test, you can look at it, He's really impressive. He can, he can, the versatility, you know, I think last year he was the only guy who, who covered like, what was it? At least 10% of possessions against every position, point right. guard centers and everything in between. Like that's, that's ridiculous. Like there, and you can tell tonight, like they had to go to zone and had to play Danny on Danny on a bunch of guys that he probably shouldn't be able to keep up with. It's, it's bizarre. I don't. I don't really have a good answer for it. I mean, I, I think. I think you take some of the eye tests, you take some of the, um, the numbers, and you try to come up with a, a reasonable evaluation on on how he's good. But he's good, like you can tell. Well, I would say he, I would. I would want to know from people who are smarter than me, like, what would he have to do more of to, like, register. On well, in those numbers, and uh, whether it's on off or whatever it is, I don't know. Defensive stats, all in one stats like that are weird. Yeah. And there were years when Kawhi was obviously great at defense and did not register well in those numbers. So I don't know if there's something about not always defending on ball. I don't, maybe it's, again, I don't know that answer. He's number one in deflections in the, the NBA. So there's a number that you can point to, not an advanced one. I do think. Still Matisse for he, 36, though, right? Uh, I don't know. I m- sure. probably I would guess. And I think TJ is second. It's all per thirty six. It's a great the all deflections list is really some of the could make that a just the future former future sixer lineup. I, I would say, and I'm I'm big eye test guy. I don't like stats anymore. But <laughs> I th- I think Simmons, the eye test with defense rewards activity. So. A lot of times you can watch, like I was actually watching uh, What's His Fuck the other night, uh, Gobert. And Gobert is positionally very good, but isn't like running around with his arms up and that sort of stuff. So I think that Simmons is obviously good. I I think sometimes a an active wing defender, because they're on the ball, can look more impressive than a... Uh, paint defender that like Embiid like sure. Embiid looked m- more impressive a few years ago defensively probably wasn't as good as he is now because a lot of it is they they stop coming at you yeah. when you get good you For know sure. you stop blocking as many shots so um so I I think maybe Simmons's defensive impact is and I think a lot of his ability of being overly aggressive is due to and Bede's existence at all behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think you have got to go eye test with defense sometimes. And he, he, he certainly passes it. So um, non-basketball question. How do you eat a burger or non-meat burger like sandwich for you, Spike? My whole life, I've just picked up the burger, taken a bite, and then alternate left and right as I eat it. I had burgers with my wife recently, and she cut it in half and proceeded to eat each half from the center out. I also watched a coworker eat one this week and saw they took bites around the edge of the burger before finally consuming the middle. Is this another one of those things that everyone does differently but nobody talks about? I think sometimes if if you treat a burger like, you know, like a sandwich, like a like a traditional lunch type sandwich, maybe if there's like a lot in there and you just want to like I need to get more control of it, I get why you cut it down the middle and go 
inside out. No excuse mm-hmm. for going outside in around the like, no, it's, it's friggin' amazing, fucking insane. Like, yeah. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, Zach, Zach, I want to give credit to Zach. Yeah, I mean, the the only way that I would say you want to cut it is like if you have one of those big giant burgers you get from somewhere. It's too high. You, to your point, you want more control. But if you're just eating a normal burger, just fucking. I don't know. Eat it on one side. Don't go all these different sides and around and what, what the fuck? I, no, there's one way to eat a burger. Eat it the right way. Um, this comes from Sam. Rocco was famously a snake owner. Dwight is perhaps more famously a snake owner. The vibes took a clear hit between the Rocco departure and the Dwight arrival. Mike can attest. Whilst I don't want Dwight to be here past this year, it seems pretty apparent that we need a, quote, snake guy to keep the vibes in check. Assuming Dwight is off the team next year, which current Sixer is most likely to take up the mantle of snake guy for 21-22? There's a lot. I think there's a lot of candidates. I think sneakily. I think Ben wow. obviously is a – Ben is obviously like a, yes. you know, exotic animal type of person, mostly dogs. But I think, you know, he his brother told me a story about this, like – wild cat that he had that was like illegal and then he had to return because it was too wild and it like him taking it on the air on the airplane or trying to get it through an airport security or something was like scratching people up so i could see ben doing it obviously danny green has <laughs> poor decision making uh selfie at uh in, for the holocaust was tough so i could see danny being a snake guy uh, doesn't shake seem like a snake guy maybe i i think shake is I think he's like really normal. Oh, I think okay. Shake is like a pretty intensely normal person. Mm. I could see Corkmaz trying snakes out. <laughs> I could see Isaiah Joe being a snake guy. Oh, I like could be like, certainly this is cool. see that. Yeah, and he he seems to have the body for to be a snake guy. Like I could see the snake kind of like wrapping her arms around a little skinny body. Yeah. Uh, and Paul Reed would look cool as hell with a snake. I will say. Yeah. I like Isaiah Joe as a snake guy, to be honest with you. That that one kind of resonates for me. Uh, this comes from Luke, basketball and non-basketball. Basketball question. I want to pose a hypothetical situation. Knowing what we know now, how good do you think the Sixers might be if in the summer of 2019, the Sixers decided to keep Jimmy Butler rather than keeping Ben Simmons and Brett Brown? Do you think we would end up with Doc Rivers as the head coach and Daryl Morey as our president of basketball operations? Does a team with Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid sit atop the East? Does a team with Jimmy deprive Joel of any MVP buzz? Um, His opinion, if we had kept Jimmy, I would have to think Elton would still be our GM and we would have a different coach than Doc Rivers. I wasn't a huge Doc fan before he joined the team, but I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, What do you think? Um. Yeah, hard to know how the coach or GM situation would have would have played. I out agree. Otherwise, you're just guessing. At that yeah. Point. yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think a, a Jimmy Joel team would be awesome. I mean, Jimmy just, I I would say Jimmy was the fulcrum of the Miami run last year. But to have Bam be as good as he is, and and a shooter like Duncan Robinson, as well as Hero and a bunch of guys just kind of doing their job and being well coached, I think Jimmy and Embiid with shooting and ball handling around them as well. If you just sort of like swapped it out, I think absolutely this team would be very, very good. I think you'd have to figure out, you know, perimeter defense a little bit more because I think Jimmy's lost a step on that end. Um, yeah. But. And yeah. shootery. you got to be very shootery. For sure, just the I mean, same way certain, Miami Certainly was, with you know? Ben as well. Yeah. Um, but the way that, yeah. I mean, well, the way well, that ben, the the other... ben is playing downhill and going facing up and and sort of, just beating guys to spots and then finishing through contact and stuff. It's, it's, it looked in the jazz game. It looked Jimmy esque when Jimmy was locked in, in the, in that playoff run last year. The the one thing that people don't give enough credit to on that Miami team is Goran Dragic. Because the thing is, is that Jimmy, Jimmy's like an okay creator. He's like, okay. He's not great. He doesn't, I disagree. I think he's great. No, he's not. Yeah, I mean, he gets the he gets the line a ton whenever he wants to. Basically, for others, he's a great, he's for a great others, passer. I, mean. I think he's, I think he's a really good passer and a smart smart player that just sees the court really well. He's not a natural point guard, obviously, but I think like as far as wing players go, I think he's I think he's great. 
I think they needed Dragic last year. For sure. You know, like sure. they needed a real guard like that. And I, you know, that that still the Sixers still would not have that. You yeah. know, that's the that's I the, think I think the a lot of the similar issues you'd have with Jimmy that you mm-hmm. have with Ben would be present in that. Yeah, for sure. Neither of them are prolific shooters. Your, your spacing's probably a little better with with Jimmy. Um but you'd still want someone else to create with the ball in their hands and that's willing to like go behind screens and stuff. Um couple more questions. Oh, is Bill's non basketball question. Oh no no no. Um this non the the Luke's non basketball question. Um this is more of a spike question, but I'd be happy to hear if Mike has an opinion. Are there any Philly based vegan restaurants that you recommend? I'm not vegan, but I do know there are some super tasty vegan restaurants and bakeries in the city. My family loves Crust Vegan Bakery in Maniac. Um, there are a lot of good ve- vegan restaurants. I would have Philly. a uh, maybe a snack out of my parents' cupboard when I'm visiting. That's a <laughs> that's as vegan as it gets there. Uh, all right, few suggestions uh, when they're open again. Veg and V Street. Um, uh, Charlie was a sinner is open now for pickup. Um, lots of outdoor seating as well. Um, really cool, like great drinks and great food. Um, and then for pizza and stuff, Blackbird or 20 street pizza, Blackbird is great, but 20 street pizza is the best vegan pizza I've ever had in my whole life. So it's great. Um, and there's a bunch of bar bonbons, very good. Like there's a bunch of vegan places in Philly, but those are the ones that I like. All right. Two more. Uh, this is from Bill from the guy who brought you the sitting versus standing debate. I come with a more, with more random observations since you never answered my basketball question about assembling the ultimate roster of process sixers. Uh, we just need more time. Non-basketball question. There are far less controversial, uh, but if you want to keep it in the shitter, I urge you to familiarize se- yourself with the poop knife story if you're not already. We're not doing the poop knife thing. But did you know that there... Did you know that? And it's usually based on gender, but people face different directions in the shower. There's an obvious amount of turning, of course, but while many people face the water for the majority of the time, many others shower with their back to the water. What are you? What are you? I am a back to the water most of the time guy. I'm front. Hmm. Most of the most of the time front. I feel like I need to know the gender split then. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm curious, um, w- which one is, is more likely that's, in- I, I, th- I think I, mean, just- I, switch. I, I, I think I'm front, but now thinking about it, I think I'm spinning a lot. I'm thinking I'm doing a lot of spinning. Hmm. You're just never constant rotation. Like I'm oscillating just around catch, catching all, all parts of the, f- of the frame. Um, and finally, from Devin, who has a basketball and non-basketball, one is related to something you said in the last pod. Who is the worst NBA player who, if they cured cancer, would win the MVP? I mean this kind of seriously. So Terrence Ferguson probably wouldn't, but the normal second-place finisher also cured cancer. It seems clear that they would. How far down can we go? So let's think about this year. Right. We, we gave so, in the uh, in the John Gonzalez execs league. Uh, we were cajoled into giving one of the other league owners, uh, I think, survived cancer, and we were cajoled into giving him executive of the year. So I think that there could be something like that. Of right. Like we got to give it to him, and I would say like, I would say probably in the fifteen to twenty range. I was like, going to say Paul George. Would could I, Paul I, George? I think you can go deeper. I think you can go into. Into like a Chris Middleton or Zach Levine or something. I still think they probably have to be the best player on their team and make the playoffs. Yeah, probably. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So maybe like I don't know, Trey Young you can make the playoffs. Hey, can you imagine? It's the play-in game, and they're like Zach Levine at the line. If he makes the shots, they make the playoffs. And given the fact that he's cured cancer, sure. he will likely become MVP. Yeah, that would have to be, we'd have to set the stage there. <laughs> and finally, um, oh, well, f- uh, first Spike and Mike, if he wants in, who is on your Mount Rushmore of guitarists? <laughs> Do you have a Mount Rushmore of guitarists? No, probably not. No. I mean, I uh, like, I like Wilco. So the guy um, like Wilco. Nels I, Klein. I, I, 
Jimmy, ha- they, like these are pretty easy answers, I, I guess. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, um, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, um, Slash, for me, and man, beyond that, it's kind of tough. Um, there's a lot of guys. Let me wait. I'll, I'll give my fourth one on the next pod because there's a lot, there's a lot of different styles. You can go Shredder. You can go somebody like Cobain, who was a kind of a guitar genius in his own right. I'll go Tom Morello. Tom Morello. Did it completely different. All my guys, except for Slash, did it totally different than anybody else. So those are my four. All right. Um, we have a stretch of some easy games coming up, right? Now is the look at the schedule part of the um, – the pod let's just win uh, just keep winning hang on we're, we're closing in on the all-star break we're two weeks away from we got bulls on break. friday so, bulls on friday the imp- improved raptors on sunday and tuesday and then mavs Cavs, pacers so it's there's it's a it's an up and down situation yeah. and uh watch young rock on hulu or peacock wherever you how'd it do on tuesday it. do you know uh it did good it did good it uh great that this was apparently the one of the best com- comedy uh, premieres in a while. So let's get those numbers. Let's get me a season two. Let's get me out of this apartment. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. All of it, guys. Come on. It's in your hands. My <laughs> career is in your hands. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's that easy. It's that like, easy. Yes. That's all. I endorse. I endorse. Young Rock. Come on. Uh, you watch Young Rock, me, listen to the Ricky, and uh, go Sixers, and Joel Embiid, rest that back. We will uh, we'll talk to you this weekend. Uh, are you done with TTP? With you. Yeah, you know. Like, if you don't fuck with me, then I, then won't, I won't fuck, fuck with you. you. If you don't fuck with me, then I won't, I won't fuck, fuck with, you. with you. But if you fuck with me, I'm gonna fucking kill you! Time for playing 